super okay yeah first of all thank you for the invitation and welcome everyone um i will now present you a study i conducted together with professor rasmus retic uh, to the topic of a simulation based method for the analysis of energy efficient driving algorithms using sumo First of all, we conducted the study in the Open Mobility Lab of the University of Applied Science in Hamburg. And first of all, I want to uh, explain you the motivation behind this study. We found that there was not really um, a method available to evaluate on the energy consumption or the energy performance of autonomous vehicles under real urban traffic um, conditions. So we wanted to couple a traffic simulation software such as Sumo with a forward-facing energy model to, to provide a tool um, for highly accurate energy simulations of autonomous vehicles. Um, therefore, we took a test scenario, which we both simulated in Sumo and also collected real measurement data on this uh, street. This is the test track for automated and connected driving in Hamburg. In German, it's called Teststrecke für Automatisiertes und Vernetztes Fahren, or in short, TAF. Uh, you can see it here in red on the map. And um, the sumo simulation of a test vehicle driving one round on this, on this road, counterclockwise. Um, the network files for this uh, scenario was provided by the German Aerospace Center. Thank you again at this point. And the measurement data was collected by us. We were driving with a test vehicle um, three times, one round on the street. Cycle one and cycle two were starting here and cycle three here and also ending there, obviously. And the test vehicle was an electric vehicle, a Tesla Model S uh, 75D. This is what came out of the measurements. Cycle one, you can see in blue the cycle data, so the speed over time. And in orange, the energy consumption. The Tesla is an electric vehicle, so it's given in the state of charge. And at the beginning of the cycle, the state of charge was around 88%. And at the end of this cycle, one of the measurements, a bit less than 86, which is a data SOC, so the percentage of the battery capacity that was consumed during the cycle. Here you can see the same values for the other two measurement cycles. In each of them, again, the, the vehicle was driving one full round on the tough. And the highest energy consumption was obtained in cycle three, where the auxiliary systems, the air conditioning and the, the ventilation was used to a higher extent than in cycle one and cycle two. And yes, so to come to the, to the simulation model, I first wanted to point out the difference between a forward and a backward facing energy model. Both of them take as an input a driving cycle, such as the one we saw in blue from the measurement cycle, cycle one. And then they calculate from the speed of the next time step, they calculate the backward energy models calculate backwards uh, from this speed through simple equations that consider some, some efficiencies to the energy consumption of a vehicle to achieve this speed curve. And forward energy models always contain a driver model and they see the inputted speed cycle as a desired speed. And the driver model will generate from this desired speed a torque request, which is then forwarded to the engine and from the engine, the whole drivetrain is calculated in a forward way to the wheels, resulting in an actual speed of the vehicle. And therefore, those forward energy models are causal and they're computationally a lot more intensive. They require detailed, um, detailed models of all the components in the drivetrain, but they can also uh, achieve more accurate results. And the energy model we were using in this study is based on the electric vehicle reference application, which is available in MATLAB from MathWorks. 
and we used an extended version that was parameterized on the test vehicle we used on the Tesla Model S. And it could also consider the energy consumption of those auxiliary system you can see here. And we used the model in a way that we passed a two dimensional driving cycle, which contains uh, in the first dimension, the time and second and seconds. And in the second dimension, the corresponding speed at those time points. And the model was used that the only output taken from, from the simulation is a one dimensional SOC data array, which contains the SOC, so the state of charge of the battery corresponding to all the time points um, of the cycle. The Kupel model, um, you can see here the architecture was implemented in Python from Python. Sumo was started through Tracy, the traffic control interface that is a package that comes together with Sumo. And through Tracy, the, the Sumo simulation with all the desired network and root files can be started. And then also all the simulation, the time, uh, the time steps, the simulation steps can be executed from Python. And between two simulation steps, all required, um, variables from the sumo simulation such as traffic light states distance to a traffic light can be obtained in python and also by a possible driving algorithm implemented in python which then again can control one or also multiple cars inside the sumo simulation and in this study uh, we only controlled one car in the sumo simulation and this car was driving one cycle the same cycle as the test vehicle in the in the measurements so one round on the on the tough and yeah then after this round was completed by the test vehicle the sumo simulation was ended and the driving cycle obtained was saved in a python in python in an array it's printed here in blue as an example just one cycle of a test vehicle one round on the tough and then this cycle data is passed through the MATLAB engine for Python to, the, to our energy model. And then the energy model is calculating this SOC data that is printed here on top. So the energy consumption of the Tesla Model S for this driving cycle. Um, to validate the energy model, we were simply passing the cycle data of the measurements. Here's the cycle one in blue again uh, to the energy model and the calculated energy consumption that you can read together with the measured energy consumption that you can see here in orange again. And you can see the measured energy consumption just was just measured with a precision of 0 0.1. Uh, percent SOC, but the two graphs are throughout the whole cycle pretty close to each other. And here in the table, you can see the difference between the measured and the calculated um, energy consumption. So this is the data SOC, the energy consumed. Um, yeah, and here you can see the highest uh, difference between the calculated energy consumption by the energy model and the measured one for the three cycles was obtained in cycle three with 1% less calculated than measured. To, to show that the used simulation model in SUMO of the TAF was accurate, we were um, running a set of 100 random simulations. The randomness was achieved by setting a random departure offset for all the vehicles inside the simulation. And also the value for driver imperfection sigma in SUMO was set to 0 0.5. And then 100 random simulations of the test vehicle driving one cycle on the tough were run. Here you can see one of them. And those 100 cycles were analyzed in five categories, namely the duration of a cycle, the, the length, the, or the distance of the of a cycle, the average speed, the number of stops, and the time standing. On the next slide, you see four out of those 100 random simulations. And yeah, you can see sometimes the vehicle was staying pretty long at traffic lights, sometimes not so much. They are all varying quite a bit. And if you imagine 
seeing a histogram of those 100 cycles for each of those five categories, um, there will be an average value for, for all of the 100 cycles. And uh, it looks like an approximate um, normal distribution. And on the next slide, you see in the upper table here, the average value of those 100 uh, simulations in all the five categories and the standard devi deviation that they had. And in the lower table, you can see for comparison, the measurement, um, the measurement values for those five categories. And if you look closely, you can see that in four out of those five categories, the three cycles were inside the boundary of one standard deviation from the average of the 100 simulated scenarios, or in the case of time standing, one cycle was just outside this boundary, but still pretty likely. And the only category where this is not the case is the distance. You can see that the simulations were having a very low standard deviation of just 4.4 meters. So all of the simulation had almost the same distance. Meanwhile, the, the three measured cycles on the tough uh, were varying a bit more. Um, this can be a consequence of measurement inaccuracies such as tire, that varying tire pressure of the car in those three measurements. And also it's possible that there were inaccuracies in the time window selection of the exact cycle. Uh, yeah, from the measurements. And uh, you can see the biggest differences here from cycle three to the average of the simulations. Um, this difference is about 2.6%. So that those categories all match that closely um, suggests that the, the model is um, fairly accurate. So last but not least, we also wanted to apply the model to a simple example. Therefore, we took the Krauss driving algorithm that most of you might be familiar with. It's the algorithm controlling cars in the Krauss car following model in Sumo, which is controlling cars by default. And obviously, this driving algorithm was never uh, developed to, to control a real autonomous vehicle, neither to be very energy efficient. But we just took it as an example to demonstrate uh, how this simulation model could be used. And um, in the cross driving algorithm, cars are usually accelerated with uh, the acceleration value in meter per second squared. If there's an obstacle with a deceleration value in meter squared, and we chose the following parameters for those two values. And for each of those possible combinations, we were running 20 random scenarios of the test vehicle completing one round on the TAF and analyzing this in terms of the energy consumption. So that you can see here, uh, for those energy simulations, we were, the, we were um, taking the auxiliary system usage, AC and ventilation to 30% as they were in cycle one and cycle two of the measurements. Therefore, you can see here also the energy consumption, the delta SOC of the, those two measurements. And here you see for each of those parameter combination of the acceleration and deceleration value of the Krauss driving algorithm, the average over 20 random simulations of the energy consumption for the vehicle. And you see a clear trend for lower param uh, parameters uh, to lower energy consumption. The best fit would be here the, the lowest possible, the lowest simulated um, combination of 0.1 or 0.5 acceleration and 1.5 deceleration. Um, and if we look at the duration of the cycles of the rounds on the tough from the test vehicle, we can see that with the lowest acceleration parameter of 0.5, the duration was quite high. Um, and the rest doesn't seem to have an influence on the duration, the trip duration. And we run the energy simulation one more time with a higher auxiliary system usage of 80% instead of 30, uh, as it was in cycle three of the measurements. And they can see that the whole graph is shifted up 
quite a bit. So the energy consumption is in general higher. And you can also see that this last line here for an acceleration value of 0 0.5 is a bit folded upwards. This is due to the longer trip duration of those simulations. And therefore, the higher auxiliary system usage plays a, a, a greater role in the energy consumption of the car. And therefore, the best fit in this example would be this parameter combination here of 0 0.5 acceleration and 0 0.5 deceleration. Yeah, this as a quick application example. And last, the last thing I want to give you a quick outlook. Um, so this developed model can be used now, uh, can be used to, to analyze driving algorithms in terms of energy efficiency and also to optimize them. It's even possible to optimize the powertrain of a vehicle uh, for a given scenario and a given algorithm. And the model can also be extended by parameter, uh, by setting it up for other, other vehicle models beside the Tesla Model S, and um, also for other sumo simulations. It can be used for other scenarios, um, all kinds of scenarios, actually. And uh, another idea is also to couple it with a 3D simulation. Uh, this is done in our lab right now, and uh, we use this. 3D simulator tool WeBots, which you can see up here. Um, and in this one, you could also implement LiDAR sensors or camera sensors that a driving algorithm that is controlling a car could access. Yeah, that was it. And now I'm happy to answer your questions if you have some.